welcome to Word on the Street. Uh, conversations about digital marketing really circled around automotive business, the components that fall into like the different profit centers at dealerships, where I get a good excuse to talk to some industry experts. Uh, and let me introduce you both real quick, and then I'll let you guys talk about a, your background. So we've got Jeff Hunter, Jeff General Motors Hunter. A lot of experience on the insides and outsides, helping just develop content strategies with dealerships. Same with Ashley Kilbarger, who's got a lot of experience working with dozens of stores, helping them just create content strategies. I don't know why I tried to introduce both of you because you guys can do it yourself. Uh, Ashley, you want to give us a quick uh, intro real quick about your background with, with content and your career? Yes. Yeah. So um, I started with Jermaine Motor Company in 2007, um, just in the um, like internet department responding to leads after hours when I was in college. <laughs> and uh, I want to say like 2008, 2009-ish, um, I had just graduated college and no one was hiring because the economy was totally in the tank. Um, and they were like, hey, there's this thing called Facebook and we don't really understand it or want to understand it. So <laughs> do you want to figure it out? Um, so I just started building um, content all the way back when um, Facebook was still like in its infancy, I feel like. Um, and then it just progressed. The more um, locations we bought, the more um, organic social I was doing. And then, you know, it with the rise of Instagram and TikTok, um, it just kind of snowballed from there. So experience just from hours behind the wheel. Yeah. Okay, great. I've got a million follow-up questions, but now <laughs> Ashley works for us. Uh, we're doing, she's doing dealer consulting where she's helping our dealerships uh, with their strategies. So it's awesome fit as the kind of person. And now Jeff, we've got some cool partnered stuff coming up, but give a quick intro to your experience, please. Yeah. So I, Mine's like a little bit of a long story. I my my father actually uh, owned a power sports dealership, so growing up, I was always around, you know, the retail side of things. And I had a really uh, early uh, entry to Facebook myself. I was actually, you know, doing things for my dad's dealership via Facebook when most people weren't weren't doing that. Uh, when he was retirement age, I kind of wanted to move on as well, so I moved. The nat natural progression, the closest one I thought would be, you know, automotive. Uh, I, I love, you know, anything with wheels and motors to begin with. And so it was a natural progression. So when I moved over there, I was doing sales and I'm like, what was the quickest way to kind of promote yourself? Right. Um, you know, so I branded myself and, and um, you know, started utilizing social media to kind of separate myself from the people I worked with. Um, but then I also started noticing that living in a small area, small community, that I would do a lot of this work and people who had already had, you know, dealt with salespeople there for the last 20 years or whatever, they would see my content, but come in and buy from somebody else. So I'm like, you know what? Why don't I do this where I can help everybody, you know, where I can help dealerships, where I can help people actually understand how to do it. And so, you know, going from the sales position, you know, being on the ground level, doing it myself, doing a little bit for the dealership as well. And then now moving to, you know, working with, um, you know, Sean Walsh at Carbis Social, head of Car now I'm the head of Carbis Social, where I'm here to kind of help uh, automotive dealers um, and, you know, salespeople, but mainly automotive dealerships get their get their ducks in a row and, you know, understand that, you know, social media is such an untapped resource uh, and, and, you know, in, a, in, a, in an essence, uh, an inexpensive resource to to you know, get a hold of customers, to get your name out there, to brand yourself um, and to do it properly. Because most people who are even, if they're even doing it, are just, are not, and it's not, it's hurting them more than it's even helping them. So my goal now is to kind of just help out as many people as I can through the experience I've got. So I've also done, continued on the social media side of my own, where I have my own brand, General Motors Jeff, as you kind of said off the top, where I do a lot of General Motors content. I've done some brand deals, uh, things like that. So, you know, the things that I've learned along the way, I'm able to uh, you know, learn the, the pitfalls, the mistakes and the things that work so that when I do, you know, go to my dealerships and work with them, um, you know, I'm, I've, I've kind of done those trials and tribulations on my own, not through having to do that for them. So when it's time to come help them, you know, we can, we can do the best, uh, best possible that way. So that's, that's kind of my story. Cool. So you're the, you're the you guys are the two MFers with the chops and <laughs> I'm glad you're on here because my experience with doing organic social for dealers was we've got a digital marketing firm, Dealer OMG, and our dealers were having str were struggling to get good content. So 
we added it as a service. We got some of the best creative writers from the best journalism schools from University of Iowa, I think. Somebody told me they had a good journalism school. So we got a couple people who were great writers. They presented themselves well, you know, just through writing. But then it was impossible for us to do good content. It was the most scrutinized thing we did. It wasn't our specialty. It wasn't our secret sauce, I found out. And it was our lowest margin. Those things matter. But the big thing is it sucked. Like we, we, like dealers would say, and it was garbage. Like it was, you know, it would, cause we don't know the service department. We don't know the staff. We don't know the inventory. We don't know the market. We don't know the customers. We don't know, you know, that this person at the front desk has worked there for 20 years and now her daughter works there and all the cool nuances. We'd be like, what's the last time you took a photo outside of the window of your car? Please post it below. Like, oh, <laughs> it's just cringy. So yeah. mine was terrible. So we stopped it really fast. Um, I guess we could start by just like, in, in your experiences, what works? What works? Like, what, how do you figure out what works? Is it engagement? Is it the, what, what's on the dealership's plate? Go ahead, Ashley, if you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, well, like you said, like an outside agency doesn't know how your dealership works or who your people are. Um, and what works is putting your people on camera um, and showing the life life behind each dealership. Um, you know, there's such a stigma around dealerships and that, you know, salespeople are just sleazy and they just want to take your money. And um, I think showing that we're, you know, people that work in car dealerships are human and they <laughs> love what they do and they're not there to take your money. Um, I think showing those people, you know, is what works and that kind of what, that's kind of what like launches your um, social strategy from, from the beginning is uh, showing them. Yeah, I, I attribute it to what I say is I say it's a personality, right? You want to show the personality yeah. of the dealership and the personality of the people that work there because I think that we've all been close enough to dealerships, whether we worked in them or we work with them, that we know that every dealership has its definite interesting you know, personalities. And all those people are different and they all relate to different people differently as well. And so the more you can show that, you know, that's the only way you can differentiate yourself from any other dealer in the country, whether you're a Mazda dealer or a Chevy dealer or a Mitsubishi dealer, whoever, it doesn't matter. If you're just posting, you know, a picture of a Mitsubishi Lancer or whatever the car is right now, um, it, it doesn't matter if you're in Oklahoma or if you're in, uh, you know, Canada where I am, it, it's going to look the same. But if you can have somebody speaking to that vehicle or in the picture of that vehicle um, that's native to that dealership, it's going to definitely separate you from everybody else. And that's the whole idea of what you're trying to do is you're trying to create that identity for yourself. And the other thing with social, too, you know, kind of going off what Ashley was saying is, you know, you're doing it because you want to show who you are, but you also want to be able to interact with with people. And, you know, if you're if you have somebody like an outside agency, like what you guys are trying to do, that's just doing that for you. Um, you're not you're not you're answering questions is something that you didn't even really have influence over right <laughs> and and so it doesn't seem natural it doesn't seem what we would call again the name you know we, what we name is organic and i think that you know the more that you can do things organically ground level boots on the ground um by far and away the more successful you're going to be i mean there's tons of dealers out there that are utilizing um these after these companies who are just doing it for them and, and you can see by the interactions or lack thereof i should say it's just not working and so you need you know somebody who can help them like ashley mm -hmm. like myself to learn how to do it and to find that person within the dealership. And I know what your next question is going to be now that I've said that. <laughs> no, it's like, yeah, there's like five questions that came up while you were both talking, but it, I, I've seen it work really well at specific stores and, and not work well at specific stores. <clears throat> um, it is finding that person who's the champion at the dealership, or do you find somebody and, and recruit for that specific role? and then teach them the car dealership world what what if, what would you guys do if you were a dealer looking to really get good organic content coming out um you could really do either i mean there are lots of people out there that um are already familiar with cars and car dealerships that love shooting content that would be happy to come in and either 
be like a contract employee or if you wanted to bring someone in-house that could do it for you or if you have a champion in your store absolutely put them in charge of it um the only thing i would say is don't it it needs to be their main focus it, it can't be someone at the front desk or some you know a sales manager um because it's not going to be a top priority for them and it'll get put on the back burner and then it won't um you know get any legs to it yeah i agree with that we've you know at carbiz we've um we've tried a couple of different ways and, and ways to do things. I mean, again, I'm a salesperson, so I know how selfish I was with, with my own time, you know, and to dedicate that to the dealership. So we've, we've delved in ideas of, well, maybe, maybe we incentivize a sale for a salesperson. We dangle that carrot, you know, in, in way, in, by way of spiffs or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, we've thought about, okay, what about the, one of the BDC people? Uh, you know, what about, you know, uh, a delivery specialist? Because, you know, again, dealerships don't want to spend that, that that money separately for that one individual. But at the end of the day, like Ashley said, those people aren't fully concentrated on what that role is. And they don't want to get in trouble for not doing what their other job is first, what their real job is there. So it's a really fine line where, you know, you might be able to make that work if you have a certain contract written in a certain way. But it's still, again, like I say, unless you have that person is dedicated full time, you're never going to get the full success that you should from a dealership. Now, the only place I could see that you would might need somebody who would be doing both roles would be in a smaller dealership pl platform. Like, I, you know, one that I worked at, it would be very hard to justify spending, you know, say $50,000 a year on one particular person. But you also aren't going to be doing that as much, you know, social media because you're also kind of already known in the community it's already a smaller place right so there's there's a balance there and it really depends i think on the size of the dealership how you look at it but i definitely agree with ashley that you you know the most success successful way you can do it is to champion somebody another way uh, i think you're kind of alluding to as well she was you know getting somebody who can go in there and at least film the content to get some content um you know organically at the dealership and then it can be filtered through somebody like ashley or myself who we can say hey listen you know you know, you get the content for us. We'll edit it. I'll, I'll edit it. I'm not sure how exactly your business works. I'll edit it. I'll coach you how to, you know, what content and how to get it the next time. And, you know, we can do it that way. That would be the only other way you could potentially work with, you know, a company to to sort of do it for you. But you would still need those boots. Right. On. Like outsourcing the editing and some of the <clears throat> distribution or scheduling and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like there was somebody that I did a terrible job of keeping in touch with, but I really wanted to keep in touch with her. Uh, and I think Ashley, you, you know her. I was flying back from like a David Kane event, the David Kane and friends, mm -hmm. friends and family. Yeah. And she just happened to be sitting next to me on the plane. <laughs> five star Chevrolet, five star Auto Group. Yeah. Kane. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, she was. She was like early. Tw she's early twenties still. Was in like the HR department had a couple TikTok things that worked well with her audience, if memory serves. And then like the dealer just grabbed her out of her role and started having her do it for the dealership. And she was showing me some of these videos that had like a million impressions for the dealership and it's distributed across the world. But it's like filters on the service department guys faces that just looked funny. And the guys would see it and be like, oh, you know, like kind of like mad about the way it made their face look but they were super funny, super humanizing and a million people. And I was like, trying. I was like, that's like the whole football stadium filled up 10 times. Like that is so many people that are seeing that without you paying a penny. Now, like if the advertising side of the business can like grab that creative and put it into the, you know, target that and have like what's working, what I've seen work well is like take that type of creative and target people who maybe just purchased a vehicle or maybe they drive a Chevy, but they didn't buy from us. Let's introduce them to the service department without being like, here's a, here's a stock image of an oil can being poured into a car, but here's our, here's our service department. We're humans. We specialize in Chevrolet. Welcome to the whatever, like have that be in the paid targeting side of the ad campaigns versus it just being organically distributed, which is cool. Um, but like that little story of like her getting out of that role and making content that's really good and engaging and for like that dealer to have the foresight to recognize it and kind of put her into a position, uh, Ashley, did you get it? Have you gotten a chance to see how she, it were like the stuff that she's doing? 
Oh yeah, I follow their uh, TikTok channel. I love the um, uh, a GM. I think he's the uh, GM there. He is like a total personality. He wears like purple, purple jackets. Suits and yeah, okay, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Um, so yeah, he. I mean, you know, being able for her to be able to link up with him and shoot content, you know, funny content like that is just gold. Um, so yeah, I've, I've talked to her a couple of times at the Kane events and, um, she's actually coming to your event here soon. Oh, good. Good segue. Yeah. We're having an event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah we're actually, That's right. I saw their name on, on the event. Which her into it. Me. <laughs> yeah. We're doing an event called being social Austin, Texas, September 20th. I think we just moved to a bigger room because it's, it's sold out. So we have tickets available again. And it's it's uh, we've got the head of TikTok, Brian Capaccia, uh, the ex head of Meta, that is uh, Adam Pavkov, going to talk about you know really how to build out a lot with the paid and the organic strategies. But then we'll, we'll have Jeff coming in talking about organic. Uh, it's beingsocialauto.com is the website. So thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, and the person from Five Star Auto is going to be there. And so you can talk to her about how she she got things off the ground. Um, that's, that's a perfect example, though, of what you guys are talking about of, of this girl and, and that dealership of of selling yourself, but not not the product, right? Like you're selling you're selling your service department, but you're not selling the service department. And I think it's a great synergy that we've talked about before. Dave Lemon and I have talked about that we've talked about before where, you know, you can have somebody that's doing organic, organic, right. And you transition that into an advertisement. It doesn't have to be a selling advertisement. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a special of hey, $10 off your next oil change. It's like, look how cool the people are that work here. Look how good we're going to help you. Totally. It's, and so that comes across so much more natural when it comes to a, a, either, whether a boosted or a, you know, a paid social ad as well. And so I think that's a, you know, a perfect, uh, perfect synergy there. But like I said, where you're selling yourself, but not the product, but you are selling the product. You know what I mean? Like, right. It's behind yeah. that. And it's like, I think like everybody's like, like dealers are prone to like, okay, social media check. We've got somebody doing the organic social media check we've got somebody running the ads and what we what we see is everybody's running the same collect the same carousel ads that are advertising the inventory and the price the inventory and the price and that's all they're kind of training their their customers and their prospects with is that's what they have is great inventory and great prices when their inventory oftentimes sucks unless you're like selling jeeps or something right now <laughs> and their price absolutely sucks. But to to introduce people to the, or the, you know, their prices are competitive, but cars are so expensive. It's like, let's stop putting that in front of people and let's just start introducing why to buy at your dealership. Then if they're coming by the website and looking at specific cars, cool, let's start to show them more specific cars that are relevant and get them, get them to start the conversation. But if we can get what Jeff's doing and what Ashley's done and get, you know, that organic piece and have that be the ad. Mm -hmm. Now it's, yeah. And now we're not just looking for everybody to fill out a lead form. We're wanting people to think about us. Well, and as Sean, as I, Sean and I say, like the model for the, for the company that I, that I do in, in Carbon Social is we want to stop the scroll. That's what we say. Stop the scroll. And what we're saying that is because if you have somebody who's, you know, First of all, there's a, a person out there and there's a person with a purple suit on from the sounds of it. Is that going to make you stop? Or is that stock photo, like you say, of an oil can pouring into a, or oil container pouring into a vehicle going to stop and make you, you know, make you look at the, the ad? Well, what do you think is going to work? Right. And so the whole idea when you're doing this kind of stuff, the more organic you are and the more original you are, the more you're going to stop that scroll and you're going to get that pe the people's attention the proper way. And again, the best way to do that is just, or you know, yeah. content. So. Yeah, it's the thumb stopping creative. It's just right. like, okay, if you're scrolling, I think the average person scrolls like 400 feet a day with yeah, their it thumb. Like, it was like the Empire State Building or something crazy like that. Yeah, <laughs> it was It was in one of my presentations. I should have remembered what it was, but yeah. to have them stop for a second and think of us. And we're not competing with all the other dealerships necessarily. We're competing with like all their friends and all the brands and all the celebrities that they follow for us as a little dealership to pop, to make them stop 
or maybe they like and comment. Maybe they jump through the hoops and fill out our lead forms. That would be amazing. But just to stop and see what the pulse is of this dealership that's in our community, the philanthropic stuff they're doing. Um, so wh- have you guys, when you guys were doing this, like at the, uh, inside the stores, did you find a good balance of, cause I feel like I've argued with, especially uh, Dave limit. He wants to be like, just do fun stuff with the organic and use the paid ads for selling. Do you have a, I disagree, but do you have a feeling for like striking that balance between like trying to sell cars versus how to, you know, versus fun, creative stuff? Yeah. Well, I mean, you don't really have to sell it. Like if someone's looking for a Jeep, they're going to go look for a Jeep. Um, (laughs) So I think the best thing to do is to just, you know, get whoever your champion is and, you know, have them pull their favorite Jeep out front and talk about all the different features that are their favorite or what color they would order this car in. Um, you know, it's more like you're influencing the the buyer rather than trying to sell what you have. Um, and that's what gets people interested. And, you know, just seeing the carousel of cars go by. If they have, if they see a video of someone walking around a car talking about how much they love the heated seats or this cool feature that this Mercedes has and the the roof lights up and looks like stars, um, you know, people are going to stop and watch that. And then they might be like, oh, I want to go see how much this car is. I'm going to go check out their website. Um, So it's more like influencing the buyer rather than selling. Yeah. And then do you see like clicks or website traffic? Are you trying to steer them to the website traffic or get them to like or comment or share or anything? No, no, because I, I, I don't believe in that. Like, that one click attribution, like that's a lot, like it, it, it's going to take the multiple things that they're going to see before they're going to want to come and see you. And like the way I, the way I did my pages was, you know, education, entertainment, and basically value. So what you're trying to do is bring value to the, to the person who's watching what you're doing. So they want to come back and you're trying to show them that you're there to help them rather than you're there to sell to them. And so for me, it was a matter of like just doing everything I could. And like I say, I saw the, I saw that come in through customers who come to see me and customers who came to see other people that they already dealt with because they had seen what I was doing. And I wasn't selling. Not once did I talk about price. N- never did I talk about pricing in any of the things I did on my organic ever. I would just talk about, you know, like Ashley said, you know, some of the cool features, a tip and a trick, a walk around in the vehicle, some cool pictures of one, uh, you know, whether I was, you know, General Motors, so there might be something interesting coming out from them. I might share that. Like, so it's somewhere that people would come back because they want to learn something. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not interesting. So I'm not like funny. So like <laughs> that stuff was never really down my alley to be like, you know, the, 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 the silly guy or whatever. Um, you know, obviously I could do the odd reel and mix something up with, you know, a funny clip or whatever, but like myself as from a personality perspective, I was very much, you know, uh, my whole shtick is I, I knew the crap out of what it was I was doing, but I did it in a way where I was hopefully entertaining, but also, you know, making it educational for people where they were learning something, you know, the, 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 I think the biggest faux pas, the biggest mistake that a lot of dealers make is they assume too much. They assume that customers know more than they do. Like yeah. I've had customers come in four years after they had a vehicle. I didn't sell to them, obviously. They didn't know they had remote start on their vehicle and didn't know how it worked. And it's like it's on their key fob, but nobody showed them, right? And so like little stupid stuff like how do you use your remote start? We might think it's ridiculous, but somebody might take value out of that and go, holy crap, I've had my vehicle for a year. I didn't know that. I'm going to go that place next time or I'm going to see that salesperson next time because – they seem like they know what they're doing or you know, they're, they're willing to help me. Um, they're not just there to go like, yep, here's the price. Let's go. Let's get this out the door. Right. So. Uh, that's super relatable for anybody who's bought a car and doesn't know how to use it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, there's a dealer group called Sewell out of Texas. That's like really supposedly is really well known for like good customer support. And we've got somebody on our staff, Jordan, who like oversaw their Lexus dealerships education for customers showing people how to use like the infotainment stuff which is a cool role like even if well in lexus tended to have like an older demographic um uh what was i gonna say there was something about organic social with um oh with uh cadillac so check this out there's a there's somebody who sells 
like when, when you're talking about like giving like car features there, I was just talking with somebody about the person in the, in the world who sells the most Cadillacs or the most Escalades is out of the middle of nowhere, Indiana. And he just has this TikTok following and shows all the stuff with the cars. I haven't looked them up, but this is, this is a story somebody told me today, but he sells on a national level. And it's not because he gets this huge TikTok following in his backyard, but he is the person that goes through Escalades top to bottom and has a good enough following for everybody buying, like a huge crowd of people buying Escalades. Now the dealerships sort of help piggyback that into distributing Escalades across the country. And it's just cool. Like that, in my head, like that's where the future of commerce, like the future of auto distribution can start coming from. Now you don't need to have maybe that dealership on the intersection of two major arteries in town with the super high rent price or, you know, land price, you can get a little on the outskirts of town and really have a sharp digital presence. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Could you imagine if you actually had to sit down and do a proper delivery nowadays on a Cadillac Escalade, you'd be there for three and a half, four hours. Like if you <laughs> wanted to go over this stuff and then you're mudding the waters anyway, nobody's going to retain all of that. Right. So if you can do it in short form digital content, ob absolutely, of course. And here's where I think the short form, like you think about short form, like, okay, that's our TikTok strategy. That's our Instagram strategy. That's our Facebook strategy. Do you guys feel like it needs to be specific per platform? Yeah, to an extent. Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, I sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt there, Ashley, but I think yeah. like no, from, from my own experience, absolutely. I mean, you can utilize your same short form content sometimes on Facebook, Instagram, you know, uh, and and TikTok to to an extent. You might want to change a little bit here and there. Sometimes changing the music depending on what your demographic is on each of those. Like for a prime example, this is the one thing that I think people really drop the ball is they're not looking at their analytics behind the scenes. So I know for a fact that my Facebook has about a fifty percent maybe slightly more female demographic, whereas my Instagram is like 95% male. So like I'm focusing my music, I'm focusing some of my actual content on those platforms to, to knowing who my audience is, right? Um, and then the other thing would be, you know, we're just talking about like the deliveries and, and all this kind of stuff. It'd be really cool to do short form content on different parts of the Escalade, but you can utilize a platform like YouTube where you could do a 25 minute or 20 minute video on like all of the insides and outsides of the vehicle in a very detailed format for people who want to see that as well. Right. So different, different content for different formats and different profiles, part of me, um, uh, social media platforms, I should say, sorry, uh, is, is definitely needed. But again, you need to know who it is you're getting across to before you, you know, you start just, you know, throwing stuff out there and seeing what sticks. I feel like there's a way, I don't know. It's like, that short form, short attention span, like I think you could do it for everything. Like with even your, like your OTT or your TV commercials and even use that same blip in your radio commercials to have like that short form, wacky personality, short, f yeah, funny or not funny, but like it's just getting that content created Then I think you can use that on TikTok and on Instagram and on Facebook and in OTT and just get that thing distributed across everything where it's not the traditional car dealer commercial on TV. Now it's the same stuff you've got kind of produced in TikTok. I've never really done this, but I'm seeing some more dealers doing it. And it's a lot more entertaining of a commercial because it feels like something that's more short format, short attention span. You know, people aren't reading long books anymore. They're doing audio books if they're a little downstream, but they want to get that quicker podcast digestible stuff than the slow build up and then the hook and then the call to action, but get that hook really quickly and then watch something entertaining. Um, I think just like, yeah, getting that content going and then getting uh, somebody that's a champion for the dealerships. Like while you guys were doing this at stores or like while you're doing it right now, Jeff, are you scheduling stuff out to where it like automatically goes live? If I had a normal like life in terms of like how my job, like I've had multiple different jobs on the go, but at a dealership level, absolutely. It just makes your life so much more simple. And for those people who are going to get somebody to do it, um, there is a way that you can sort of get somebody 
uh, that may not be doing it full time, they can do it in a way that they can batch the content and then they schedule it out, right? Because the biggest complaint I always heard from a salesperson when I was at the dealership and why they wouldn't do it is, oh, I don't have the time. Man, yeah. I was a salesman person and I did pretty well and I still had the time I, because what happens is, yeah, you might be busy for three and a half days out of that week and like 100% on the go, but you're also going to have these lulls where you can go out there and batch two or three pieces of content that you can use on the days that you're not busy and you schedule it out so you don't even have to worry about posting it the day you're busy because you already have it scheduled to post out that day. Because most of the content we do at Automotive Dealer is green content, especially because we're not supposed to be selling and selling promotions and sales. But if we're just selling the product and the dealership and us, then it doesn't matter if I post that on a Monday or a Friday, right? It's go, it's green content that should be able to be scheduled. So scheduling is massive for a dealerships and for uh, you know individual, whether it be salespeople or whatever, who are trying to promote themselves as well, organically. Did yeah, you do I'll, the scheduling, Ashley? Yeah. Oh, I totally agree. Um, I did batching content because it was the only way I could survive with having so many rooftops that I was producing content for. Um, I would batch it certain days of the week, edit it and then schedule it. Um, and it, the same thing, it, it, it also helps with ideas too. Like I know a lot of salespeople that, um, I was kind of helping them build their brand. They'd be like, well, I don't know what to post today. Um, but when you batch content, you get all those ideas out and then you don't have to think about that throughout the day when you're rushed with, um, customers and you got a million things going on. You don't even have to think about it. It's just already there. That's what I would do. I, w I feel like I would also feel anxious, like actually sitting there and clicking it. And I'd be wanting to like, look back at it, how it's doing and double checking my spelling and seeing if any I'm getting any hate, <laughs> but if it just goes auto, you don't have to look at it going live. I'm, I'm looking at your screen right now, Ashley. I'm realizing there's a jacket or a shirt that looks just like that purple jacket that uh, the five star auto guy wears. <laughs> oh, yeah, over here on my little rack. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that color too. Um, I, I guess, like, if you were going to give a dealership some advice on where to get started, if they think their content's stale or they got somebody else doing it, or very likely they just don't have anybody posting content for their store, where would you start? You want me to go? go yeah. I, yeah. I wish it was like, so yeah, I, you I go think, ahead. I think, you know, first of all, you just have to, to do the damn thing, right? Like, I think everybody just sits here and spins their wheels and thinks about this and that and the other thing. And how should I do it? Like, just do it. Because the interesting thing that I found, again, now that, now that I'm working with dealerships across the country and, and actually across North America at this point, um, is, you know, a dealership in a small area where I live could be, you know, totally different than a dealership in Tallahassee, Florida. And it could also be a Tallahassee, Florida could have a Mitsubishi dealer and, and a Chevy dealer. And they're completely different in terms of what works and doesn't. So the only way you're able to even find out, first of all, what works is just by posting a whole bunch of different content that you can, right? The other thing I say, and I've, ne I've never been one to do this because I think I started on the ground floor. And so I've already, was already built up by that point. I realized this, but sometimes imitation is the best form of flattery. And, you know, uh, you can flatter another dealership by looking at somebody that's somewhere else and not necessarily copying what they're doing. But if you can see some of the people who are doing things successful, what is it? This, what is it they're doing that's making them successful, especially if they're the same brand as you? Don't like I say, don't copy that. But there's certain things you can take from those ideas, especially if you're a dealership who doesn't have the ideas or somebody that's spinning their wheels that way. You know, that's another thing you can do. But two things I would say is, number one, you just need to get out there and do it. And I would say this to managers, don't go out there to the sales floor and yell at your, your, your salespeople and say, just go and do this. Because there's a couple things. Number one, you're not doing it probably as a manager. Number two, salespeople like myself, we're very proud people. We don't want to look like idiots. And it's not that they don't have the personality or that they can't do it. It's that they've never been educated in terms of how to do it. So I think a lot of dealers need to really educate who it is they're putting in that, that position before they just let them run rampant as well. So that's kind of the couple things I would say on my end. Yeah. Okay. What uh, can I ask real quick? What, how did exactly did you get the GM Jeff? Yeah. So that's funny. I know I you actually, work with, I actually hate the name. I actually hate the name, which is hilarious <laughs> because I think it's corny, but when I was doing sales, I was at a general motors dealership. I've always been a GM guy. So, you know, even if I didn't work there, I knew I wanted, wanted to do something with general motors in the automotive space. And, uh, I just knew that my name, Jeff Hunter, is pretty bland. It could easily get lost. It's like John Smith, that you know, uh, Jane Doe. It's a pretty bland, you know, kind of boring name. But General Motors Jeff sticks out, right? It's very clear in a couple of ways. It sticks out because it's a little bit different. And it says exactly what I'm about, right? 
So if you're going to brand yourself, it it, does. Whether, it be on, whether it be on Instagram or, or TikTok or Facebook or YouTube, especially, which is where I started to really go, you know, how do you brand Like you want simple, easy people to know what it is you do. If I'm just like Jeff, the car guy, or like, I don't know. I, that's kind of why I did that. Um, and now it's stuck and I'm kind of stuck with it because it works. It's that it, so, like, I knew who you were. I knew of you before I knew who you are, right? who you were, you know? Yeah, it works. That's, that's exactly why I did it. So I branded myself, um, from a sales perspective. And now that's just my online, I don't want to say persona cause I'm, I'm the same person in person as I am online, but it's my online personality. Uh, you know, it's my online branding, I guess you would say. And I yeah. think dealerships, dealerships can do the same for themselves. They don't have that tag name, but they're going to have something that sticks, whether it be they use the same color fonts and every, you know, same type and color fonts and everything they do, this, you know, similar music and some of the things they do, whatever it is. Um, there's, there's very a way to calculated. Like yeah. Yeah. Like I knew a dude who had leopard print hair that would go to conferences and he's like, dude, I just, it's not because I like leopard print hair. Everybody remembers that. Out. Everybody remembers yeah. that person. Absolutely. Uh, Ashley, what? Okay. So if you were going to give some advice to, because you did this with, how many stores did you have at what, that you were working with at Jermaine? Um, we had 22 stores. And you were doing the social content for all of them? No, um, yes and no. So I would so, produce content on the ground for stores I could get to. And then um, we had people on the ground at other locations that I would work with and help them train them, um, you know, best practices. Like he said, you can't just let someone run wild with your <laughs> yeah. brand store um, because then crazy things happen. But So you um, would help empower that person and hand them the keys to the social media castle for the dealership and help them kind of yeah get a strategy in place. It sounds yeah. like actually you you would vet you you're vetting this as well, right? So like they could do the content, but it's coming through it's filtering through you before it gets posted. Yeah. Especially if it's something like sexist or religious or political or whatever. You're that like, would never happen. Yeah. Automotive yeah. industry is like super. No. Yeah. Nobody talks like that. Yeah. 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 Or they <laughs> want to do something funny, like cap cut, you know, is all the rage and they'd want to post something with like, you know, Nicholas cage in it. And I'm like, we can't, <laughs> we can't use copyrighted stuff, you yeah. know, in our uh, social media. So, um, you know, definitely. Can you, can you not use copyright and stuff? It's kind of a fine line. You can. Yeah. But as a dealership, would you think they would get like you can't slap on the wrist? It. Yeah, you can't use it for like advertising. So if you were to throw it into a paid ad, then you could get in trouble for it. Um, but it's still kind of a fine line to put it out there anyway, because it's, you know. The chances else. are super slim, but if you do, get, then it, then everything you've done is 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 done. Yes. Right? So it's is it worth the risk? Is basically what you yeah. how you look at it. But Morally, what if you're Mark well Wahlberg it. and you own the dealership and you get <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different than loopholes? Um, cool. So I guess uh, Jeff, how, if somebody wants to get, are we comfortable wrapping this up? Do you guys have any like thank? So again being social auto.com austin texas september 20th we got a bigger room we'll have tickets you'll learn a lot we've got uh table uh sessions where you can sit down with people from uh the deployment side from agencies from platforms with TikTok, meta uh and consultants just to help your dealer walk out with a strategy we've got cigars we've got drinks we've got lunches and a hotel and it should be cooler in Austin. And Austin's cool. I don't know if that's the presentation of it. But also, Jeff, you're doing this for stores, helping them with their content strategy. How do they get in touch with you? Yeah, so there's a couple of different ways you can get a hold of me. If you just the easiest, one of the easiest ways is you can you can still contact me at anything General Motors Jeff. Doesn't matter what social platform, except for X or Twitter. I don't use that. Just never have been a fan. Um, but any other platform you can you can reach me at uh, LinkedIn or wherever. But then the business side of things, the real side of things where I want to help you guys is Carbiz Social um, and CarbizSocial.com. Uh, pretty easy uh, website to remember. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm excited for for Austin as well. I've actually never been. Uh, I want to let everybody know that I might talk a lot on here, uh, but I'm not going to be talking at you at this conference. I think that's one of the coolest thing about this is that we're not having like slide decks and all this kind of stuff. It's, I mean, most of us aren't. It's a matter of, you know, being there to help you dealers, 
um, and, you know, really interact. So it's going to be questions you have, and it's going to be a really interactive uh, experience, especially with Sean Welsh running around with a microphone, uh, you know, getting people uh, engaged. So, you know, keep in mind that this is going to be a great, and I'm really excited. We have opened up more tickets. And I think, you know, don't hesitate to get on there, you know, as well, because it could be a waiting list. So if somebody can't make it, you never know. We might have some last minute stuff too. So, uh, but yeah, that's how you can reach me. A long winded answer. Perfect. And Ashley, I know you've got stuff. You've got social stuff. You're also, you know, you're d working with dealers with us right now for the first time on on the agency side and not on the dealer side. You're working with dealer OMG, but but where could people follow you or any of uh, your presences online? Yeah, um, I mean, you can always look me up on uh, LinkedIn with all my information there. Um, I do have kind of an influencer. Um, Instagram at a healthy dose of ash, um, where I share like fashion try ons and healthy recipes and things like that. Um, cause fashion is actually what I went to college for and I ended up in automotive world. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of crossover with that. Yeah. Like somebody just came from like a purse company and is now working for Cadillac. That's actually, I've been to the last three presentations I've been to with GM they've been talking about interior and they're, they're like referencing purses, they're referencing clothing, they're referencing yeah. art. So I a lot of people it. are coming from that side of This yeah. is why you're GM Jeff Hunter too, is because when we talk Escalades, you're, you've got the I know. manuscript <laughs> on what's going on. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I was talking about. I wanted you to mention the, uh, the fashion uh, yeah. side of what you're doing too, because that's, that's the organic thing. Like you're practicing what you preach. Absolutely. Well, guys, hey, uh, thank you. Thanks for uh, hopping on and uh, going on with me. And uh, I'm Andrew. You're Ashley. You're Jeff. And uh, appreciate it. Thanks, thanks so for much, tuning man. in if you've yeah, listened this long. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye.